Welcome to COVID-19. It's been a week since we began inoculations here in the country and over 225,000 people have received their first dose as of early this Friday. Now we have live scenes from one vaccination centre here later on in the programme as well as experts' thoughts on the growing presence of variants across the world. Here first are the latest tallies with our Kwonsoa. So I hear we have fewer, slightly fewer that is, than 400 cases today here in Korea. Yes, uh, we're down to the 300s for the first time in three days, so that can be a psychological relief. But if we take a look at the number, we are just too short of 400, so not a dramatic change that we're seeing here. So 398 is the number of new infections, and also the number of new recoveries this Friday happens to be the same. And uh, by we have 381 domestic transmissions and also 17 imported cases, which means a slight drop in both of these. Now, if you take a look at our map now, we have the highest number of infections in Gyeonggi-do province, followed by the capital Seoul, and also double digits in Incheon, Chungcheongbuk-do province, as well as down in Busan. Now, we are continuously seeing cases swinging back and forth between the 300s and 400s. So given this trend, authorities are being cautious in making a change to social distancing measures. But this afternoon, a draft of its revised social distancing scheme is to be unveiled. Uh, authorities say, though, it's still too early to make a decision on when these new measures will take effect. I see. Meanwhile, so I hear there's also been an update on our vaccine procurement. Right, Sunny. Earlier this morning, Prime Minister Jung Se-kyun said there is now a firm schedule for supply of AstraZeneca vaccines uh, that are going to be provided through the COVAX facility. Here's what he said. We will receive vaccinations for 350,000 people this month and 700,000 people's worth in April and May for a total of 1,050,000. I asked the Korea Disease Control and Prevention Agency to review its vaccination schedule to ensure that we can inoculate as many citizens as possible in the first half of the year. Right, and according to news just in, we've heard that uh, Korea's drug regulator grants has granted a final approval that is by a panel of medical experts here to Pfizer's vaccine for use on those who are 16 and 17. But then here in Korea, the vaccination only includes people who are 18 and above. Right, so we're back to you then. All right, Sunny, let's go back to what Prime Minister Tong se gyun said earlier this morning. He also noted that despite a holiday here in Korea recently, the nation was able to vaccinate more than 20,000 people. Here's the exact number, uh, 200,000 people, I should say, 225,853. And also here's the number of daily vaccinations made yesterday. Our song Yan will go into the details in a bit. And uh, also more and more European countries are making a U-turn in their stance on AstraZeneca vaccines for elderly people. Uh, citing enough data, Germany uh, has become one of the latest countries to approve the vaccine for people aged 65 and above. And so has Sweden as well. So they are jo joining other countries such as uh, France and also Italy, who earlier this week made that decision. These two countries, meanwhile, are seeing more than 20,000 new infections on a daily basis. Here, Italy, almost at 3 million now. Sunny is going to connect uh, via Skype to Italy in a bit. Meanwhile, in Poland, we see another a surge in cases, 15,000 new infections. And if we take a closer look at the global figure here, we have a total of 116.2 million infections, similar rise to yesterday, but a slight decrease in daily fatalities. And those are the updates I have for now. We do not have a coronavirus briefing on Friday afternoon, so I'll be back on Monday. Back to you, Sunny. All right, so I'll thank you for that. I'll see you on Monday. Right, and just a reminder to our viewers here, Pfizer's COVID-19 vaccine has secured a final approval from a panel of medical experts here in the country. The announcement was made, that is, just a few minutes ago. Meanwhile, on the international front, Italy is struggling to contain the spread of coronavirus variants that have been linked to higher transmission rates. For more on the situation there, I have Dr. Michele Usueli, who is also a councillor of Italy's Lombardy region, live on the line. Pleasure to have you back, Dr. Usueli. How are you? Thank you again for the invitation. Right, Dr. Usueli, let's begin with efforts there in Italy by the new administration to tackle the spread of variants in the country. 
Yes, uh, basically uh, our new prime minister uh, Mario Draghi uh, strengthened the, the 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 rules and the regulation that we have. So basically, uh, as you may know, health is decentralized in Italy. So every region should uh, send to the central government weekly uh, 21 indicators. They vary from the incidence of the new case to the uh, intensive uh, care bed occupancy rate. And so there is an algorithm who uh, divide us in uh, colors, red, orange, and according to the color, it is uh, stated our limitation of uh, freedom. So uh, this is one of the system. Then uh, we continue with the uh, testing, uh, tracing and treating. And of course, we have the new weapon of the vaccines. I see. I also understand, Dr. Ossioli, that about half of all new infections involve variants. And speaking of that, the British variant appears quite prevalent among infected school children. Could you tell us more, please? Yeah, uh, first reaction uh, is a shock. Uh, is a shock because uh, uh, we don't know if variants were more contagious or uh, uh, affected more seriously our people. And uh, um, then, uh, of course, uh, uh, it is more contagious. It does not affect more serious, uh, so serious our people. Uh, we had a peak of 64% uh, uh, incidence in uh, my region, in Lombardia, in north. So we have to make people understand that it's more contagious, but it's not more uh, dangerous. It's not uh, affecting uh, uh, the effectiveness of our vaccine. And yes, we start to see new cases in school. So uh, we need to do more testing uh, in the school. Uh, um, and uh, by the way, school, in my opinion, are more safe than uh, leaving students uh, wandering around uh, in uh, in our cities. So I dream of a country where we close the school just one by one uh, if there is an outbreak and uh, we can have uh, diagnose uh, and testing at school level, not sending our children uh, in uh, uh, in the health center because with the rapid test uh, we can have uh, an answer uh, right there right at the moment i see so dr usuli schools are poised to open next monday then as planned uh, it depends on the regions in milan in the north of italy uh, we close our school by today uh, of course, uh, uh, the more fragile children, like uh, disabled children, they can still go to school. Uh, and also, uh, uh, the sons of uh, doctors that are, for instance, both working at hospital level, they'll still go, they still can go to school. But otherwise, uh, yes, uh, in, uh, in, uh, in a part of Italy, we are uh, experiencing, uh, sadly, after one year, a complete shutdown of, uh, of, uh, of our school system at, in presence. Of course, we, we, we do by internet. I see. Meanwhile, uh, Dr. Osele, COVID-19 vaccinations began in late December in Italy. What is the latest on that front? Now we have around uh, 3 million people that has been vaccinated. Uh, we started from the health stuff. Then, of course, uh, it's, uh, and it's almost over. Then we are into the vaccination program for the uh, people that uh, are aged more than 80 and the disabled people. So our criteria will be uh, age, of course. We have uh, Pfizer, Moderna and AstraZeneca as uh, a vaccine that uh, we are uh, uh, using. Uh, it's, it's important to point out and it's good that uh, two days ago our government decided to postpone, to ask people uh, the, that uh, uh, were sick and then healed to postpone 
uh, their vaccination schedule because they are uh, they already have antibodies in the body and so it's important to communicate our uh, sick sick and healed uh, citizens that they don't need to go running for the for the vaccine now we have little bit slight different uh, 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 agenda of trying to changing the schedule, but I think we must be stick to the plan based on the scientific data. For instance, I'm not very happy with the shortcuts of uh, having only one shot uh, if the schedule of the vaccine uh, uh, for a C two shots. Right, of course. Dr. Osili, have there been any reports of vaccine side effects in Italy? Uh, yes, of course, nothing very serious as any other uh, vaccine uh, uh, you can experience uh, uh, side effects. It's important that doctor and equipment for uh, uh, emergency is there at the vaccine side, uh, as it is uh, uh, in, in my country uh, everywhere. Uh, we don't need any blood test uh, to detect antibodies or other things before doing vaccination. Interestingly, the most uh, serious side effect uh, has have been reported in people who already were uh, uh, sick. Uh, and so also because of that, we oh, and because of the scarcity of the availability of the vaccine, we uh, ask our uh, healed people to uh, wait a few months before uh, uh, getting uh, vaccinated. Right. Dr. Ussel, in recent days, there's also been greater public support for the country's vaccination campaign. Please tell us a bit about the support. Yeah, uh, actually, uh, I am very happy that this uh, increase of popularity of the uh, vaccination uh, has uh, come uh, with the scientific data. So it was important for us to understand from the Scottish or the Israel experience that uh, uh, with the vaccine coverage, uh, more than 20% of the population, they have seen a reduction in the in the transmission of the vaccine. So I don't see really anymore in Italy a problem in convincing people to uh, get vaccinated. Our two bottlenecks are in fact the availability of the vaccine and uh, the difficulty of uh, distribution because of uh, uh, somewhere poor organization of the vaccine distribution system in some regions of Italy. I see. One final very quick question, Dr. Ursula, before you go. I hear there's also been a bit of controversy over face masks in Italy. Could you fill us in? <sighs> Okay, no, there is no, I hope, any more uh, geopolitics of fake fake mask. We have uh, uh, experienced a few uh, fake uh, certification uh, uh, of uh, mask imported uh, from uh, China uh, uh, that uh, were not uh, uh, good enough, but they had a fake uh, certifications. But in the end, please let me uh, say something as it, this is an international channel. We need to multiply the production site of the vaccine if we want to vaccinate all the world. Low income country, middle income country, high income country, uh, uh, the, vac the, the virus does not respect borders. So uh, it's outrageous that rich country started very well uh, with the vaccination and very poor country did, does, do not have access. Uh, governments need to contract with uh, companies uh, a system of uh, uh, multiplication uh, sites of production of uh, vaccine. Right. Dr. Oselli, thank you very much for your words of enlightenment. And as always, thank you for making the time to join us live at this very early hour at your end. Yeah, yeah, now I'm going for a very good Italian coffee. Thank you. All right, Dr. Osley, thank you very much. Right, back here in Korea, indeed, we are marking our first week since the start of our vaccination campaign last Friday. And as Sua mentioned earlier, over 225,000 people have received their first dose of the COVID-19 vaccine as of early Friday. I now have Kim sung yeon here in the studio with more details on that. Welcome, sung yeon Hello, good afternoon. Right, so I understand we're off to a good start. 
Right. Uh, it's been one week since the rollout uh, has began here in the country and uh, the inoculation drive is definitely gaining steam with more people being lined up to get their first shots as well. Now, last Friday on day one of the country's vaccination campaign, patients and staff under the age of 65 at long term care facilities, uh, they were the first in line to receive their shots. The Korea Disease Control and Prevention Agency said a total of nearly 226,000 people have been administered with the first doses as of midnight yesterday. AstraZeneca's vaccine accounted for nearly 222,000, while Pfizer's took up over 3,900. Now, Korea's vaccination campaign is expected to pick up pace as more people in high-risk priority groups, including medical workers and patients at nursing homes, get their shots as well. Right. On a more somber note, then, do tell us a bit about the latest government investigation into post-inoculation fatalities, Song Young. Right, Sunny. Uh, so six people have died so far since they have uh, received their vaccines, and uh, health authorities are indeed trying to determine if there is any causal relationship between the deaths and the vaccinations. Now, all of the deaths occurred in those with pre-existing conditions such as heart disease or, or diabetes, and health authorities stress that so far no links have been established between the vaccines and any of the post-inoculation deaths report, reported worldwide. Nevertheless, uh, KDCA Chief Chung Eun-kyung said in a press briefing that investigations are underway uh, and she also had some words of advice to share for those getting ready to receive their vaccinations. In order to prevent serious post-inoculation side effects such as anaphylaxis, please make sure you're in good health condition on the day of your vaccination and drink lots of water prior to getting our shot. Also, do let your doctor know if you're feeling unwell and if you have any underlying health conditions. As for adverse reactions, side effects were reported in a total of 1,578 people, which is up uh, by 860 from a day earlier, but the vast majority of them only had mild symptoms. Anaphylactoid reactions, which are similar to anaphylaxis when it comes to symptoms, they were reported in six more people, raising the total to 13 cases. I see. Meanwhile, also here, major hospitals have started vaccinating their workers. Right. Uh, Sunny, Seoul National University Hospital uh, began rolling out their vaccines yesterday morning at 9 a.m. Uh, it did start giving the AstraZeneca shots to the medical staff there, making uh, SNUH the country's first tier one general hospital to start their vaccination program. The hospital plans to inoculate 1,000 people daily over a 10 day period uh, starting yesterday, and the first person to be vaccinated was its president and CEO Kim Hyun Soo. Following his inoculation, he stressed that there was nothing to be too concerned about in getting vaccinated. Let's take a listen. I think what's most important is to let go of any irrational fears and feelings of mistrust that we might have. In order for all of our workers to get fully vaccinated, I decided to lead through example by volunteering to be the first person to receive the vaccine at our hospital. The hospital said more than 95% of its staff are willing to get vaccinated, excluding those who are pregnant. Now, another major tier one general hospital, Gyeonggi University Hospital, also began its inoculation program yesterday and Asan Medical Center started today. Next week, other major general hospitals will roll out their vaccinations for their medical workers, including Severance Hospital, Samsung Medical Center and Ihua Women's University, Mokdong Hospital. Meanwhile, critical care workers treating COVID-19 patients at these hospitals will be receiving the Pfizer vaccines as scheduled. Also in related news, Song Yun, I believe there's been another boost in confidence for AstraZeneca's vaccine on the elderly. That's right. Uh, this is according to preliminary research over in the UK, uh, which was published on Wednesday. And it says AstraZeneca's vaccine prevented severe illness among elderly at-risk individuals. Now, the results, uh, which have yet to be peer-reviewed, is adding to the growing body of evidence that the vaccine, which uh, several countries have held back from the elderly, is both safe and effective in older people. The study showed that even a single dose provided remarkable protection with 
one shot of AstraZeneca's vaccine reducing uh, severe COVID-19 cases by 80.4% and 71.4% for Pfizer. Professor Adam Finn from the University of Bristol who led this study urged European countries to get on with using the vaccine on elderly patients to save lives. Uh, so I did mention about the uh, European countries that have authorized the use there. But here in Korea, the country's drug regular, regulator is still reviewing the use of uh, the AstraZeneca vaccines on those people aged 65 and over pending further study results. Right. OK, sang -yun, as always, thank you very much for the coverage. Thank you for having me. Right now, for some actual scenes from the vaccination sites set up across the nation, I have Chan Song Cho out on location. Hello, Song Cho. Good afternoon, Sunny. So, Song Cho, which center are you at right now? Well, I'm at Pupyeong Community Health Center located in the northwestern city of Incheon. Well, I'm here to show you guys how vaccination is taking place actually at the site. Well, inoculation began exactly a week ago on February 26th in South Korea. And ever since then, people have been coming here every day to get a jab in the arms. So let's get inside and take a look. So this is where the people are waiting for their turn as you can see. Well, you may not be aware of this, but you can't just walk in here and get the shot in your arms. Uh, you, because you have to plan, you have to schedule an appointment beforehand. These public health centers are all based on appointment. And doctors will also have to examine you first before you get the vaccine, uh, if you're in the right condition to get the vaccine or not, if you're feeling under the weather. So this is where you get the examination from the doctor. If you're feeling all right, only then you'll be moved to this room where the vaccines are actually administered. So here, as you can see, there are two doctors who are administering uh, vaccines to people. And uh, what they're also using here is a special syringe called a low dead space syringe, as you can see right here. So they really minimize the leftover inside the syringe after use and using that syringe they can get about 10 to 12 injections out of an AstraZeneca vial or six to seven injections out of a Pfizer vial. And here over here, this is the cold room where the refrigerator is kept and the vaccines are stored. As you all know, uh, the country's immunization program relies on a complicated cold train of freezers and temperature controlled conditions because vaccines have to be kept cold at all times from the moment they leave the manufacturing plant to right before they get injected into your arms. So here they have a temperature control or a monitoring system or the device installed inside the refrigerator that really uh, automates con temperature control and data logging. And it also is equipped with an alert system. Uh, that way, healthcare workers can respond quickly in case of an emergency like power failure or equipment problem. So, yes, we are in phase two of the immunization drive, which means um, in, vaccines are available to high risk individuals at healthcare, so such as healthcare workers and patients at long term care homes, um, skilled nursing facilities, and rehabilitation centers. And under the current guideline, a doctor can inoculate up to 100 people a day. So, uh, as you saw here, they have two doctors on staff, and uh, that means here, around 160 to 180 people are getting vaccinated on a daily basis. So why don't we talk to the officer in charge to get more details about the vaccination drive here. So uh, good afternoon for joining our show. Thank you. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Um, so yes, people are getting really excited about getting the vaccine at last. Um, so what is the one thing that you try to keep in mind at the center of it all uh, in terms of vaccination? Uh, vaccination has been an interesting task of the public health center, but the, since corona vaccination has never been done, so there is a great concern about the adverse reactions like the kind of side effect. So we put the most emphasis on the safe inoculation by controlling it well. All right. So as you mentioned, yes, while the, much of the population is ready to get vaccinated once they're made available to them, well, there is still a fair amount of skepticism by some about the safety of the vaccine. So what would you like to tell uh, people like them? It, it is natural to feel anxious. Uh, this vaccine is approved 
uh, have been approved by the WHO, the United States, Europe, and the Korean Food and Drug Administration. And honestly, what vaccine is the only game changer is light. So, and above all, we will do our best ensure, to ensure safe inoculation by considering even the parts that should never be present and the preparing a countermeasure. All right. Thank you so much for all the work and effort you put into immunizing everyone in South Korea. Thank you so much. All right. So how quickly we got the majority of the population vaccinated will play a key role in determining when we can return to life as usual. But it's also important for everyone to continue using all the tools available to help stop the pandemic. And we all know the drill, right? Wear a mask, wash your hands as frequently as possible and keep a social distance from others. This has been Chun Sung-chul reporting live from Pukpyeonggu and back to Sunny in the studio. All right, Song Chu, as always, thank you very much for that coverage. Monitoring our church, we see how in the Juyo Sanjingu gets harder to put dead. 현재까지 인과관계가 입증된 사망 사례는 보고되지 않은 상황입니다. 백신 접종이 자칫 방심의 신호탄이 되어 4차 유행이 현실화되지 않도록 긴장의 끈을 놓지 말아야 하겠습니다. 's COVID-19 vaccine has garnered yet another vote of confidence from a panel of medical experts here in the country. The announcement was made by the country's drug regulator about half an hour ago. Meanwhile, in today's studio session, we explore the challenges ahead, including the growing presence of variants across the world amid vaccination efforts to better contain the global outbreak. I have Dr. Kim Sing Tech from Institute Pasture Korea with us again. Hello, Dr. Kim. Good afternoon. And I also have Dr. David Kwok from Sun Chanyang University Hospital. Good to have you back, Dr. Kwok. Good afternoon. Right, Dr. Kim, we've been saying this time and time again in this program today. It's been week one now. We have just uh, finished our first week of vaccinations in the country. We've uh, inoculated about 226,000 people, close to that figure. How do you assess our vaccination campaign thus far? Well, uh, I actually haven't seen anything just unusual so far. I mean, everything's probably just the procedure as just planned by the government. Uh, but I think the, uh, but though I actually, the, the, the previous I also talked about some, uh, uh, maybe Korea is uh, just a little bit late in terms of just a vaccination, just a starting. But then we have actually witnessed the, uh, some uh, a real world the clinical, uh, clinical data uh, over the just the two months in the Israel and the US and UK and the EU. So which is actually very good for us. And then we are actually just uh, somehow very good at just the mass just the campaign, whether it is vaccination or some other things. So I think uh, we are pretty much just, uh, just we will just catch up with the, uh, all the, the speed and then some uh, the vaccination rate just soon. Right. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, Dr. Kwok, I hear you received your first dose of the COVID-19 vaccine early this morning. Tell us a bit about your experience. All right. So I have a lot to tell. Uh, so there was a little bit of mishap because I was originally planned to receive it yesterday. That was my plan to actually receive it yesterday. But uh, uh, sadly, a, a doctor got in line uh, who received the last shot for one single vial. Uh, as uh, um, um, the reporter Chan Sung Cho already mentioned, if we open up a vial, we are supposed to give it to 10 to 12 people for AstraZeneca's vaccine. And, and I was the last one just standing there. So they could not open up a brand new one just to give me one shot and then waste all the nine or 10 others. I see. So they uh, made a delay in, in, the, in the, the plan and I received it today uh, with a fair enough warning. Uh, but really, I'm really not having anything in, in, in ordinary. I'm just uh, feeling as usual. Maybe slight numbness, if I may um, 
go deeper into it, but when I don't think about it too much, I really actually don't feel anything. I so see. I'll have to look out for another couple of days. Um, I've been warned that I should look out for myself for another uh, three days or so to see if I have any uh, particular uh, side effects. Uh, the particular ones that I've been warned against is uh, having mild fever or mild chills or some nausea, but I don't have any of that yet. Uh, so I'll see what happens. What about your colleagues? Are they also seeing, witnessing no side effects? Well, not particularly from the colleagues uh, from my hospital, but uh, I have several other uh, colleagues that are uh, dispersed throughout uh, different locations. They've experienced uh, a fever uh, overnight. Um, some of them had it harsher, some of them had it much milder. So, and they actually told me to take um, acetaminophen in advance. So I had a pill of acetaminophen in my pocket when I was going into the vaccination site and I actually took it right afterwards. So, uh, but I'll, I'll see what happens tonight, but hopefully it'll be much milder for me. Right, hopefully. Mm -hmm. Now, Dr. Kim, while there are people like Dr. Kwak who are fortunately uh, not suffering from any side effects, mm -hmm. there have been at least uh, more than that is 1,500 cases of side effects here in the country. What are your thoughts on this? Well, actually, the, the, those side effects is not really just uh, uh, just uncommon. We have already just uh, well the well documented just result at least from the uh, some clinical trials for the uh, uh, well the uh, messenger RNA vaccines. Uh, well, the actually it's about about the. The 80% of the side effects are just already reported, well reported, especially like uh, injection site pain and then like uh, some uh, other uh, headache or just fatigue. It is just a pretty much just mild thing. And for AstraZeneca things, it's about just 50% uh, of just uh, the participants also just uh, experience such a kind of mild things. But I think uh, this is a uh, this is not a big issue. And then, well, people are actually also just curious about why, I mean, is this really just common or not? I mean, if we just compare the side effects when we experience from the flu shot, this is about like uh, half of uh, those uh, the percent, like uh, the uh, thirty-four percent or something like that. So uh, it's actually just uh, uh, it's higher than the uh, the higher the percentage of uh, just uh, side effects compared to the flu shot. But in just uh, in compensating compensation is that uh, we got uh, just better protection for flu shot. It's about just uh, really just over fifty or sixty percent of efficacy. But here is a Moderna and the Pfizer vaccine or AstraZeneca, at least seventy percent for some messenger RNA vaccine. Vaccine is uh, is like a f uh, 94 or 95 percent. It's kind of as a trade-off, and uh, I think that's uh, that's pretty much about it. And then for the uh, other issues, like uh, there are some reported some uh, death, and uh, but uh, as uh, some other just a KDH, KDH, KDCA also just uh, the person also said there is no just a direct causality at this moment. And then if there is a, some anaphylaxis something like that, so we have uh, some guideline like uh, waiting just 15 to 30 minutes after shot, so that the medical staff will just uh, prepare any sudden just uh, the many accident, for example, like just administering some epinephrine. I think this is good. And the most of the uh, death that uh, reported so far is like uh, days or like weeks after the vaccination, and especially for people with uh, some uh, high risk. And then we, in this case, it's, it's really actually difficult to just correlate those deaths is uh, actually actually with the uh, some uh, uh, the vaccination. So it's really difficult. But that they uh, compared to uh, some uh, normal the death rate for such kind of the group, actually there is no uh, statistically uh, statistically significant just a change, just a difference in this case. Right. Mm -hmm. Dr. Kwa, keeping in mind what Dr. Kim has said, uh, keeping that in mind, of course, mm -hmm. what are your words of advice for those with underlying health conditions prior to being inoculated for COVID-19? Well, uh, I would say that you should be at the, your healthiest state when receiving the, uh, the vaccine. But formally, though, the CDC or the key CDC does not have anything in regards to people with disability or underlying diseases that should be against receiving vaccinations. They actually go ahead and strongly suggest all people who have disabilities or having underlying diseases to receive vaccinations when they can. Um, so that having said, um, people with allergies, uh, when we do inoculate, uh, we uh, try to take extra care just in case they show an anaphylactoid reactions or anaphylaxis. We've never had any at, at our particular hospital, but uh, those are some of, some of the things to keep in mind. And we have usually uh, people who are allergic stay uh, a little longer at the waiting site and observation site just in case, but th none, 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 nothing out of the ordinary really happened so far. Uh, but in regards to people with stronger um, diseases, entities, um, really, we have nothing against them. I guess it's the state of the 
health that they have on at the time of receiving the vaccination is more more crucial uh, to uh, possibly prevent further side effects. But but also, as Dr. Kim mentioned, there is really no correlation that has been proved that uh, the, the ca cases that was uh, showing for moderate or severe um, side effects or people who died sadly timely after the vaccinations was due to the vaccination. So we have to also keep that in mind. And I, as I've said before, uh, the CDC guideline or the KCDC recommends all people, uh, including those people who have disabilities and underlying diseases to receive vaccinations as promptly as possible. Right. Meanwhile, Dr. Kim, challenging our vaccination efforts is the presence of variants. Now, authorities have also pointed to variants as a variable to triggering a potential fourth wave here in the country. What are your thoughts on the spread of variants in the, in, here in Korea? Well, the uh, emergence of uh, the variant viruses is not of just a concern in, just in Korea, but this is uh, some global concern. And then the thing that we are actually taking, the, the, taking some actions against it is that just uh, we're monitoring the uh, all just uh, uh, the for um, foreigners, even just uh, Koreans coming just from just uh, the coming from abroad. And then the, actually our government is uh, actually very just careful about that. But uh, that's probably just the maximum that you can do unless we just uh, completely close our border. But then the emerging, uh, just uh, this uh, emergence of this new variant, it can actually happen on the just uh, domestic territories as well. And uh, maybe it just uh, happened, maybe, well, this is not a real concern, maybe it's just a vaccination is not really just uh, successfully accomplished. They, those kind of variant, maybe very similar, can just uh, arise just, uh, well, well, very naturally. I mean, this is the way of just a virus just behaves. Right. Uh, staying with coronavirus variants, authorities in the, UK, in the U.S., that is, are tackling a fresh challenge of homegrown variants, one detected in California and another in New York. Now, I have Kartik Gangavarapu at the Scripps Research Institute live on the line. Good to see you again, Kartik. Good to see you too, Sonny. Now, Kartik, do start by telling us about the spread of variants in the U.S. then. Yes, yeah, so I mean, I think as uh, coronavirus as, as it keeps replicating, you're going to keep encountering these variants. Uh, and 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 as we have seen, like there's there's some new variants uh, under investigation in the U.S. right now, and more evidence is required to actually c classify it as a variant of concern, like for example, the U.K. variant or something. Doctor Kim, I believe you have a question for Kartik. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, hi. Actually, just I, I just heard about the, uh, some uh, new variants from U.S., like uh, the, the variant from uh, California and the New York. And uh, is there any known just a factor regarding the, any uh, transmiss transmissibility and then the mortality of this uh, variant? Uh, so for the B1, uh, 427 and B1, 29 lineages, which were found in uh, California, there seems to be some preliminary evidence that it could be up to 20% more transmissible than previously circulating lineages. And there's some preliminary evidence that it could, that patients with this lineage could have higher odds of getting uh, admitted to the ICU. Uh, but this is still preliminary evidence. And I think there's a higher burden of proof to be established to actually establish that it is indeed a variant of concern. Uh, unfortunately for the New York variant, which is the uh, B1526 lineage, uh, there, there's, no, there's not enough evidence yet but we do see that um, the prevalence of that variant is about 34% in, uh, from genomic sequencing. I see. Now, Kartik, I do understand it's quite early to ask, but what can you tell us about the efficacy of our current vaccines on the variants identified in the US then? Um, I think there's no evidence as of yet. I think that that deserves careful study. Uh, the one important point to make there, though, is that, that the B1526 lineage was found in New York, also picked up the E484K mutation, which is found in uh, the uh, B1351, which is a South African variant. Uh, and, and that mutation has been implicated in helping the virus evade immune response. So that is one lineage to keep out for to, and, and, and keep a close watch on. But there, there needs to be further evidence to see exactly what kind of effect it has on vaccine efficacy, because the effect of a variant uh, on a vaccine efficacy can be quite heterogeneous based on all the mutations present in that particular lineage. Right. Dr. Kwak, I believe you also have a question for Kartik. Yes. Oh, so Dr. Gangarapu, 
Uh, thanks for sharing your time with us. I um, am yeah. hearing these news that uh, certain states are kind of opening up and easing under restrictions, such as in Texas, uh, when they're reaching about 12% of inoculation rate uh, for a person to have at least received one dosage of a vaccination. Um, what are your thoughts, and, uh, thoughts on this, and what do you uh, see the prospect of the easing of restrictions are in those states? I think the easing of restrictions is a little too premature. Um, especially with the uh, UK variant, uh, the B117 lineage going around. And I think we, we think that the prevalence of that variant is somewhere between 20, 25 and 30% right now. But as that prevalence increases, you would, you would you'll actually see more cases. And as we know, it's more transmissible as well. Uh, so I think it's a little too premature. Uh, however, of course, like uh, with the vaccination drives going on, that will act as a force against any surge of cases. So it still remains to be seen how that will pan out. All right, Kartik, as always, thank you very much for your time and your thoughts at this hour. Thank you very much. Right, Dr. Kim, what makes these variants more transmissible than the original strain of the coronavirus? Well, before I, I, before I answering the, the question, I think uh, more transmissible, we need actually more just experimental evidence because uh, more transmissible in these cases, uh, well, in the, uh, based on some of the prior examples, actually just uh, trying to, like a UK cases, they, uh, UK is the probably the number one in terms of uh, sequencing the viral genomes. So actually they are just monitoring the uh, old viruses just, uh, uh, just in time course. And then, then they I identify that some specific just a variant is just the dominates out of the all the, the virus population. So then the, this is a, a kind of a, just a way at this moment is a, just a transmission. I mean, just a, the more dominant in terms of viral population. And I think this is the, the transmission and others and the emergence of the variant. I, I, I just uh, view this as a, just a, the uh, natural behavior of virus. Virus under some certain or any other just a circumstances, try to find uh, just a way, in way that, that they can replicate more efficiently. So this is the very the natural, and then even like uh, there is uh, some uh, some selective pressure, like uh, if there is any some uh, antiviral drug development or like a vaccine, the virus uh, maybe just may evolve to any other just a variant to escape such kind of immune selection and also some uh, antiviral just a drug the the selection pressures. Meanwhile, Dr. Kim, what progress has been made on the local treatment front with regard to variants? Uh, for the treatment, well, the, uh, the, most of the variants, the, the most concern is that uh, we actually, the main focus is the interaction between virus spike protein and the ACE2, just, which is the receptor. Those actually are actually just uh, uh, in the case for the, the vaccine development and the monoclonal antibodies. And in fact, uh, some uh, certain monoclonal antibodies actually do not work very well against uh, these uh, just uh, variant issues. So I think uh, just uh, some already just uh, these uh, monoclonal antibody just uh, co just companies uh, trying to just uh, develop just some backup antibodies to just uh, just just uh, address uh, those issues and then the board vaccines as well. I, I also just heard that uh, like a uh, messenger RNA based vaccine for like Moderna and then the Pfizer, they already started uh, some. Uh, alternative just uh, the vaccine candidate. In this case, manufacturing itself is very easy. They have already just a well-established platform for mRNA vaccine, even for AstraZeneca and other adenovirus vector vaccine. They can just uh, simply change the, uh, the sequence of the spike protein. So the manufacturing itself, I think uh, there's not gonna be just big problem, but there's some the clinical trials is the major issue. But recently I heard that maybe just the US FDA seems to be just very uh, facilitate such kind of the procedure without just uh, uh, going through all very detailed uh, clinical trials. They might just authorize the, uh, some uh, new vaccine which it could just address the, this variant, the viruses. All right, given the urgency of the situation, please. Sure. Dr. Kwak, a public forum has been scheduled for this afternoon to address the future course of our social distancing measures. Now, as a medical expert yourself, in what direction should our future course head to? Well, I am going to say that uh, our government is trying its best and they're really doing quite well, relatively speaking, in terms of really mitigating the numbers down to the numbers that we're currently having. I would hope, certainly hope that it could go even further low. Uh, but in regards to um, um, transmission, we have to think about spaces. So any confined spaces we have to limit, including that might be public transportation, 
might be office spaces, might be religious spaces, any confined spaces we have to limit, but then we could sort of uh, have them come outside and do all the activities rather outside and farther distance apart. So I guess that's one factor that we could take into consideration when the government tries to make uh, the, the, the decisions on newly uh, socially distancing. But I guess also realistically speaking, we have to uh, factor in all the economy, uh, all the other factors that has to be dealt with, uh, of course, government making the wholesome decision here. So I would hope that they would make, come up with the best uh, idea and decision possible so we could all live uh, very happily. Right, and in the meantime, we'll stick to what you always say to uh, wear our masks, wash our distance, and wash our hands. Absolutely. Right, Dr. Kwak, as always, thank you very much for your thoughts. And Dr. Kim, thank you for being with us today. Right, along with variants, authorities say the growing movement of people within the country is also looking to challenge COVID-19 containment efforts. Do seek to refrain from activities outdoors as we seek a path out of this pandemic tunnel. Have a safe weekend. See you on Monday.